Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Uh, we're here, we're still dealing with early season conditions here at Stowe, um, but the skiing's pretty good. It's fine. Yeah, totally. Um, and Bob picked up a pair of Core 93s for himself this season, mounted them with that snazzy looking pivot Forza. Um, so we thought we would take the opportunity to do a Core 93 review. Last spring, I think, we did the Core 99. Um, same changes apply to this ski, so basically that top sheet material. Yep. Um, but as we've found, although it sounds like a really subtle change, it feels pretty important. I definitely feel like they're quieter than they have been in the past. Yeah, so I grabbed a demo pair from uh, Pinnacle Ski and Sports, our brick and mortar shop. Uh, figured I'd ski them alongside Bob. So we're gonna take at least one more run here and then we'll meet you back in the studio and chat more about these skis. I'm really interested to hear more about how they feel with a pivot for yeah. such a stiff ski. I feel like that could be a key to unlocking their true performance. I'll be happy to talk about it. Hey skiers, here we are back in the studio. Pretty fun to be on snow again. It is, you know, it's always nice getting this first kind of individual review under the belt for the season. Totally, yeah. It really feels like a, like a ceremonial start to right. the season when we do the <laughs> first like on snow ski yep. review. Yep. Um, and this one was really fun. Bob, you picked up those Core 93s for yourself this season. Yep. Really excited that you did. Um, Neither of us have, have owned a core, right? I think, since their inception. So, pretty exciting. Yeah, and this was kind of something that I kind of wanted to do for myself. You know, yeah. I feel like we do a lot of things for the company and the channel, and that's all great. But totally. Like, this was something that I kind of, it kind of, I, I've been waiting for a spark ever since I broke my Soul Rider 87s. Yeah, you, uh, you wanted a replacement. Yeah, and these bindings have been sitting in a box since that and they needed a, a pair they needed a home so i was just kind of like <laughs> waiting for some, for a situation to present itself sure um you know like for me personally in my quiver like i got narrow stuff set i have wide stuff set i never had like a mid 90s you know we kind of talk about the enforcers and it's like i have 188 right you always but talk about them you for could a trade 94. them for the 94. right so sure. like th this is this just kind of happened to present itself and kind of provided that spark for me and I was like, all right. Sure. Uh, I'm going to say that in honesty and vanity, I just really love the way these pivots look on this they, The too. color matching is really good. That <laughs> sidewall to the, the toe is, is pretty yeah. spot on. Yeah. Um, and before we get into your individual experience and some of my thoughts and stuff like that, it's probably worth at least doing a refresher on construction. Sure. So. You're now the Core 93 right. expert, so take us through a little, just a little recap. We don't need to go into the nitty-gritty details because I think people at this point know that these skis have been at least relatively similar for the yeah. past, say, four years or so. It's impressive in the amount of stuff. We talk about it with Vocal in terms yeah. of like being a kitchen sink style of ski. Uh, this one really does it as well with the materials. Yeah. Um, you know, it's... It's easy to kind of start with the core, but it's almost better to start Indeed. with the bottom. Yeah, right. Um, so fiberglass, so base, fiberglass, damping layers on the side, then a layer of carbon. Uh, then we get the wood core. The sidewalls are actually a little bit thicker. They go into the ski uh, a little bit more, kind of like a Dina Star, like a hybrid core using polyurethane. This is just kind of a more extended sidewall in there. Uh, then on top of that core, we get more fiberglass, graphene, and then the top carbon laminate. Uh, this is kind of where we can spend a little bit more time talking about that aspect, is that upper laminate. You know, kind of if you look at the, uh, I guess the yellow, really nice to show off the yellow. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's not a full sidewall. Yep. It's, you know, pretty much a half sidewall. Half and cap, kind half of. Half cap. 
and the term that we learned last year was chamfered. Chamfered, yeah. With an F, which yep. I had never heard before. Great so word. It's really fun to say. I always like I learning I encourage words. you to just sit there at home and say chamfer. chamfered. Chamfered. So they have chamfered the edges, which basically means curved. Yeah. Um, and that curve matches the carbon laminate. So they've curved the carbon. And anytime you're putting materials like this in that three-dimensional format, uh, ripstick carbon tubes, uh, vocal 3D glass, uh, you know, you're, you're putting these materials, uh, vertical metal, you know, yeah. Rosignol's ridged yep. metal cap. Yeah, I think that's you know, a really like, cool story. Totally. Yep. So a lot of companies are putting these materials into three-dimensional formats. The curve of the carbon in the core really does a great job of getting that precision to the edge. Yep. Uh, that's what really has always kind of struck me about these skis is that and when you put it on edge, then that carbon is pointed straight down at the snow. So you're really getting that direct transfer of energy. Uh, big, you know, big plus in, in the world of lighter weight skis, I think. Yeah, yeah. So that's, you know, that's pretty much construction. Like we talked about with the Core 99 last year, they added a top sheet, helps with durability, does make it a little bit quieter, more damp, so. Yeah, so that's the change for this season. Correct. Is that additional top sheet material and like we said in the intro, it doesn't like sound like much, right? But I think like I, I do think it's noticeable when you ski them. Yep. They just feel a little bit smoother. Um, not that the previous skis were like jarring, but there's less of that kind of like teeth chattering. Right. Like, oh gosh, this is very stiff. Yeah, they've definitely dumbed down that the carbon ping. Right. With it. Um, but that said, they are still tremendously stiff. Yep. So, you know, I, I say that jarring stiffness, and, and that doesn't really go away. Right. It's just the feel is, is kind of less harsh, yep. which I think is really important for these skiers. Um, but, yeah, incredibly light, incredibly stiff. The, if, you're, if you're looking at that ratio, they are at basically the top. Right. If you're combining stiffness and, and light weight, as a as a ratio right they are the stiffest and lightest yeah your plot graph is going to be exactly top, yeah exactly right your x and y axis yeah. is both just like <laughs> slammed to the max um, and then taking a quick look at shape before we kind of get into performance and, and we'll mostly hear from bob but i want to talk about my experience on them too because like we've said over the years with cores it is a little different yep and i think that's an important thing to consider if you're looking at these skis for yourself so I like to think of this as a pretty straightforward all-mountain shape. Yeah. There's, there's camber no underfoot. No surprises. No. There's no frills here. There's yeah. nothing crazy about it. There's a good amount of camber underfoot. There's kind of a slight amount of tip rocker, yeah. which I would say you feel more on like turn initiation than any kind of added float or anything like right. that. And then not really much tail rocker back here at all. So mostly cambered ski a little bit of rise in the tips and tails this is the 177 which has a 16.4 meter radius 17 and 7 in this 184 yes, a little longer on on your long length yep. there so that's about it for construction and shape um really the, the same story the same concept that we've been talking about for years now with the core 93s and any of the cores so Bob, kind of speaking to your experience on them, yep. um, I really liked the way that you described how you kind of landed on this ski and where it fits in your quiver and yep. how you can use it. So why don't you start there and then just tell us the things that you like about them. Sure. Um, I've always used some type of twin tip skiing with my kids, yep. which is really easy. I think when I started when they were little tiny, I had a 191 Enforcer 100, and it took me about two days of skiing there, and <laughs> I'm like, do that I need anymore. something else. Yeah, So, sure. yeah, picked up some twin tips, you know, Soul Rider 87, yep. uh, Atomic Bent 90, yep. you know, really great options for slower speed, woods, adventure, moguls, stuff like that. Yep. Um, but certainly left something to be desired in the performance department. Sure. Um, so, like, I feel like the sacrifice of that, the sacrifice of playfulness is worth it given the light weight of the core. You know what I mean? Like, yep. I'm giving up twin tip flex. Sure. I'm giving and up twin this. Tip, and twin tip kind of tail edge release. Right, and, and this yep. 
for a stiffer and more precise performance. Um, and as my kids have progressed, like we're skiing faster, we're doing more stuff. Yep. So I wanted something that could handle the bumps and trees like we always do. And then not only just when we pop out on the groomers and ski together, but also like when we're skiing together and yep. just like normal free skiing days, like this thing has that range to be able to be that short turn, slower speed ski while having that higher performance, you know, ceiling. Sure. Which is really what I like about this. Yep. Um, yeah, totally like that mid-range ski. Like I've always been like, yeah, mid-90s, great place to be. Uh, as I'm getting older and a little less active, I like something lighter. Yeah. You know, I, I think we talked about it when I, the first day I skied on uh, a Montero AR this year, my impression was, whoa, these are heavy. Right. Like my legs After were, you'd been skiing on yeah, those for probably 10 days. 10 days on these, yep. moved to a Montero, you know, my legs were tired that night. Yep. So this is really great for just kind of that all day skiing and the next day and the next day. Like yeah. Super easy. No, and I like that concept that it kind of fits in between your skis. Yep. You know, you were saying that like enforcers, you, they're great skis. You love ripping around on them. Yep. Not so fun with the kids. Right. Bent 90, super fun with the kids, can't really rip around on it right. at 6'2", 225. Right. Like there's some limitations yep. there. Um, so that's really cool. Um, we've always talked about how these skis, the core skis in general, and I think it's more true with the narrower skis, which is more of a profound conversation. Um, they tend to work better for your skiing style than my skiing style. Yep. And we had a fun little conversation the other day that maybe is representative of our skiing styles so you guys can understand. We were skiing with a former racer and Bob and I were kind of talking about our perceptions after we got off the mountain. And we were speaking to the racer like, when they're skiing down the mountain, they see gates. Right. Whether they're there or not, they're not. But they, that's their mindset. It's like turn, like turn, it. turn, yep. turn, round, turn, round, turn, round, turn. When I ski around the mountain, I see like park jumps and terrain park right. features. That's just how my mind works, unless I'm like specifically like carving or something right. like that. But in general, I think about the mountain as the, the quintessential term, like a big playground. Right. When Where's you, their air? Right. Yeah. Where's their air? Yeah. yeah. Where can I get in the air? Where can I do a 180? Where yeah. can I do a switch 180? Stuff like that. When you ski, you think of the mountain as a big mogul field. I just pretend like I'm in a mogul line like the, yeah, right. the whole time. So I think that's a really cool way to think about these skis and describe their performance is yeah. they tend to work really well for you making those short, quick turns. Yeah, the lightweight obviously is a huge factor, but then just like this energy, you know? Like Tons. You're able to get a lot of energy. Yeah. We had, you had touched on that tip shape. You know, it's pretty round. Yep. And so a lot of those shorter turns where I like to, you know, use my foot steering to really get the tip of both skis to kind of go at the same time. Right. Like this is super, it's a lot friendlier than you might think given the stiffness of it. Yeah. So I think that the tip shape really pairs well with the stiffness of the ski. Yeah. And allows you to enter that turn and then use those tails to get you the next one. I mean, it, the, when I watch you make those like short, quick turns on the side of the trail on those skis, yeah. it looks like a tool that is making the job easier. Right. If that makes sense. It, no, it, totally. And it, I mean, you're 100% correct. Yeah. Yeah. Now, for you, speaking to bigger arcing turns mm -hmm. and, and carves, they also seem to work pretty well. Yeah. And we talked about this with 99, but like, I think once you kind of hit that 200 pound threshold, like right. you're able to effectively bend this ski. Right. You know, whereas if you are lighter than that, it's more difficult. Right. Even if you have a good skill set. Right. Like you're you're just gonna you're gonna fall victim to the stiffness at some point. Right. The lighter you are, if you're pushing it. Right. The that's that, kinda, that, and that's that's an interesting yeah like asterisk on this right. situation is if you're pushing it and I'll, yeah. I'll talk go ahead I'll talk a little <laughs> bit more about that so I feel comfortable and confident pushing this ski yeah I can bend it it's not gonna fight me back too hard yeah um, you know it gives the appropriate amount of feedback I don't find these tails overly stiff because when I get them on a higher edge angle right. I feel comfortable 
bending it and riding through that right through that carve. Um, you know, whereas you and like you did this on the 99, you did it on the 93 the other day. You just hit a wall with that tail. Yeah, totally. And you can't bend it anymore. Right. It's super interesting. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah, I always have really interesting experiences on these skis, and there, there are like things that work really well regardless of skier size and skier type. Like short, quick turns on the side of the trail. Yeah. They, yeah, they're great. They're fine. They're yeah. easy to throw around. Um, it is like for somebody like me that's coming off or generally coming off a ski that's probably a little bit softer or has some rise in the tail. Like I think I mentioned this like after our little run down center line the other day. I was like, there's a lot of like a <laughs> yeah. lot of pop out of those yeah. tails. So when I'm making short quick turns, that's like kind of the one thing that I have to remember. Yeah. But they work really well for that. Yeah. When I'm trying to carve on them, it's this weird experience where like I need to be at the top of my game personally yeah. like I need to be skiing well which I don't do all the time like sometimes you're gonna have off days and like not ski that well on a given day like that's just yeah. how it works I also find that I need pretty firm snow so there's something to push against yeah totally so and when we were skiing the other day and, and it's kind of been the story of the early season here in Stowe we've had a lot of that loose soft granular snow and Get, trying to get the ski to make like what I would consider a dynamic carve on snow like that, it just felt like this weird like balance thing where I was trying yeah. to like find the sweet spot of the ski and get it to bend, and it, I just couldn't really do it. Yeah. If there's firm snow, I can bend it, but then it brings up this whole other situation where I'm not always right. ready for the amount of energy and rebound it has out of a turn. Yeah. So it's like a weird, it's a weird thing. And I think I'm glad you brought up like how hard you're pushing it because I think there are a lot of skiers out there that are closer to my size that that's not even going to be a concern. Right. You're, you're never even going to get there. It's like those high edge angle, pretty fast, big sweeping carves. That's where I find the limitation not everyone skis like that. Right. So if you ski with more of a short turn style, moderate speeds, kind of techie terrain, that kind of stuff, and you're my size, I don't see any issue here whatsoever. If you're my size and you're kind of shopping in this category and you like to generate super high edge angles and like see how low you can get your hip to the snow, I'm not going to say it doesn't work. I'm just going to say that it like it it there's an interesting, it, it's tough to find the sweet spot sometimes. I, it almost seems like skis with metal th that added dampness would help the summon of your size. Totally. This. Because, I, and I think with skis like that, it's less of an energetic flex pattern. Right. So it's like, the, the, one of the things that makes this ski so good is also the thing that can make it challenging for somebody like me. Yeah. Where if you take a ski with similar stiffness, but with m more reliant on metal than carbon. And if you think about the properties of those two materials, the metal's not going to snap back as quick. Right. So I can push and push and push and push and get them to bend those metal skis, and they don't like surprise me coming out of the turn. Yeah, there's a big difference between letting, letting the metal do the work right. and letting the carbon and exactly. do the work. Exactly. Which is, a, you know, it's one of the reasons that this ski's a little bit kind of, you know, Polarizing, Different. I think. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, there's yeah. definitely some people that are like, nope, not for me. A hundred percent. And other yeah. people like me that are like, yeah, totally. Works I get great. it. Works great. Does yeah. exactly what I want it to do. Yeah. Does what I tell it to do. It's not too difficult. Yeah. Like all of those good things. Yeah. So I really enjoy like situations like this where a ski works really well for you. Yeah. Where I can still appreciate the benefits of the ski, but I don't know that it's like the best thing for me. Yeah. I think those are fun. There, are, every once in a while, there's a situation where a ski works like really well for both of us. Right. But like those, this, it's like kind of rare. Yeah. And even in those situations, like we're, what we're doing on them is probably a little bit different. Totally. Now, I think we've been talking for a while. Feels like it. But that was good. And it's fun to talk about <laughs> skis, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but in the intro, I was curious about the pivot, and you've skied these. So here it is with an attack demo binding. Yeah. 
you know, in, in the head or with a Tyrolia tag in the head catalog or if you're shopping in the head Tyrolia format, you'd be putting an attack on this ski. And they make a beautiful yellow. They do. Color, and like, I don't want to take in. anything away from attack yep. bindings. I think they're great. There's so many things I like about them. Low stand height, wide platform, yep. like twin cam heel piece. There's some, it, it's a good binding. Yep. It's a very good binding. Do you feel any difference being such a stiff ski with I, a pivot? I felt this, I, you know, we talk about the round flex pattern that the pivots enable. Right. And I felt it and I think it really, is magnified on a ski like this. Right, because and, it's so stiff. Yeah, and if I didn't have these in a box, you would see a yellow attack, attack on yeah. them right now. Yeah. Um, so totally, I get it. And if we kind of look at where you're, I tried to do a little bit of a lineup before this, but like, you know, where your last. Oh, the last holes. Kind of the last holes type well, of situation. It's a demo binding, so it's a little different. And the but font not is really. different. That was my big diff That was my big thing, but like, my holes <laughs> right. are a lot further up into the tail than yours. Right. So if um, anything, you're letting that tail bend a little bit right. more. Like you, you're taking a stiff ski and, and you could you could point out, and I guess that's what we're doing, right. that a binding like this could create a stiffer, not necessarily a dead spot, but it's not letting the ski bend. See you later, break. <laughs> Bye, break. Um, <laughs> it's not letting the ski bend as right. much. So I was I'm interesting in the concept. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So something to consider if you're looking at cores and you want them to flex a little bit more naturally in the tail, um, you could consider putting a pivot on them. Yeah. But I also think that just throwing an attack on there is going to work great for yeah. most people. Totally. But no, I did notice that you know, pretty much from the first time out. You yeah. know, that with the demo, yeah, you're feeling more planted, yeah. I guess. Yeah, But sure. I definitely found that these are equally as agile really allow for that nice round turn shape. Yeah. So I really like that about it. Cool. Well, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> anything that you want to end with? Is there anything we missed? We missed one thing. The shape varies per size. Sure. This is a core 95. Yep, that's a 95. Yep. This is actually the 93, I that's think. That's a 93 in the reference length. Yep. Huge range of sizes, 156 to 191. Yeah, what's the 156? Do you remember? Like is it 89 something. or something? Yeah. yeah, like it's pretty narrow. So, yeah. you know, keep that in mind. Don't just buy a core 93 thinking it's 93. If you're shopping for a 93 underfoot, you're only shopping for a 177. So, you know, when you go down to a 170, you're skiing a core 91. Yep. You know, when you're at a 191, you're skiing a core 97. Yep. So there are differences. It's mainly to keep the turn shape about the same. Um, but, you know, that's something that is, you know, it's not unique to this ski specifically, but. No, totally it, not. It does. A lot of manufacturers do yeah. that. So, yeah, don't get too hung up on the name, I suppose. Right. If you're getting a shorter ski and you want a core 93, get a core 87. Oh, boy, you just <laughs> lost me, I think. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, um, that's it. That's the Core 93. Um, Bob, I'm really glad you're enjoying yours. Oh yeah, it's fun to fun to ski something as a test without a demo binding on it. Oh totally, and just knowing that you're going to ski it for the rest of the year too. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll check in with you at the end of the season. Yep, I'm see looking how much forward you to beat it. them up. Yeah. Snow conditions out there right now are probably They're damaging those bases a little bit. They could use a tune. It'll be fine. Yeah. Um, so let us know if you have any questions as usual. Super excited to be back to doing some ski reviews yep. and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.